Hello? Is this thing on? Testing. Surprise! It's me this week. I know you missed me. I know. It's okay. I miss you guys so much. I know I see some of y'all every Wednesday night, but some of you I haven't seen in forever. So I'm so excited to be sharing um, the message with you this week. Um, I hope that y'all are hanging in there. I know that this time is super weird for all of us. Like, incredibly weird. Trust me, I'm an extrovert. This is not going well for me. Um, but I'm really glad that we have some sort of sense of normalcy. And so I, um, yeah, I just wanted to bring you guys this message today. And I hope it finds you where you're at. And I hope that it encourages you and hopefully makes you laugh a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, so this week we um, are kind of doing just something kind of a little bit random because we finished up Songs of Ascent last week, if you remember, if you were paying attention. And so now we're just going to be taking a couple weeks to just do some random psalms because why not? So I'm going to kick us off by reading one of my very favorite psalms and um, just kind of talking a little bit about how it's influenced my life and then hopefully it'll it'll just give you guys some encouragement too. So we're going to be talking about, get ready for it, this idea of preaching to ourselves. You heard me right. Preaching to ourselves. Now, you're used to listening to Ethan preach to you. You're used to listening to me preach to you sometimes. Probably your pastor on Sunday mornings, whether that's Jason or someone else. Maybe you listen to sermons online. Maybe you feel like your parents preach to you. You're used to this idea, right, of people preaching the gospel to you, preaching good news to you. And hopefully these are really influential teachings. I hope that they are. I hope they encourage you, and I hope they've had some kind of impact on your life. But I'm here to share with you something that has completely changed the way that I think, the way that I think about the gospel, the way that I think about gospel teachings, the way I think about the Bible. And that is this idea that no one is more influential in your life than you. You heard me right. I know that's weird. I think by the end of this, I may convince you that I'm right about that. Right now you're probably thinking, I don't think so. I don't think I'm a very influential person. By the end of this, I'm going to have you believing differently. So we're going to read from Psalm 42. It's one of my all-time favorites. Um, I really would encourage y'all to follow along. If you've got your Bible, let's pretend like we're together reading our Bibles, okay? So I'm going to read from Psalm 42. And while I do this, I really encourage you to pay attention to the words that the psalmist uses, the language that he uses, the nature of the language. Because I think you're going to start to notice something about the way that he speaks, not only to God, but also to himself. So get your Bible if you need to, pay attention. Let's, let's hear what the psalmist has to say. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So what I love so much about this psalm is it kind of allows us to be a fly on the wall of this psalmist preaching to himself. He's not really preaching to anybody else. He's preaching to himself. And we get to kind of just eavesdrop in on this little conversation that he's having. I kind of just picture him standing in front of the mirror, giving himself like a really motivational pep talk in the morning. 
don't pretend you haven't done this before, maybe like before a big test or something. I know I definitely have. You is smart, you is kind, and you is important. Now, we don't really know anything really about who wrote this other than it says the sons of Korah, whatever that means. So we don't really know much of anything about who this is, who this psalmist is, or really what his circumstance is. But we know that it must be really tough because he says that his tears have been his food, meaning that he was crying enough for that to be his nourishment. That's crazy. We know that whatever it is that he's going through was an incredibly, incredibly tough situation. So it probably would have been really easy for him to just turn in the towel when people asked him, where is your God? Probably would have been really easy for him to just turn in the towel and say, you know what? I don't really know and I don't think he's coming back. But that's not how this psalmist rolls. He says to himself, why are you downcast? To himself, he says that. Why are you downcast? Put your hope in God. He's not preaching to anybody else. He's preaching to himself. And I know for me, it's really easy for me to just kind of slip into that mindset of, God, where are you in this situation? Why do I not feel your presence with me right now? Where are you? And are you coming back? It's really easy for me to think that way. Even if no one else hears it, even if I look fine on the outside, a lot of times that's what I'm thinking. God, where are you? It's really dark in here. I'm serious, y'all. That is how I think sometimes. I think, God, I don't know where you are and I don't see you in this circumstance, especially during this time of uncertainty. I have woken up so many days and just thought, God, like, this is terrible. If you were real, like, why aren't you doing something about this? Come on, buddy, do your thing. And then I find myself really trapped in that mindset. For the rest of the day, all my thoughts are centered on that truth that I told myself in the morning, that God is not enough, that his word is not enough, that his promises aren't enough, that he's not with me. Y'all, just like really positive things that you say to yourself have an impact on you, so do the things that you say about God. They have an impact on what you think about him. If you really do believe that this is full of truth, if you really do believe that he loves you and that he's with you. Now, I said earlier that no one is more influential than you, and I promised I was going to prove that to you, and I think I have your answer. The reason that no one is more influential than you in your life is because no one talks to you more than you do. Think about it. You talk to yourself all day long, probably subconsciously, probably not out loud, although maybe sometimes. We all go a little crazy sometimes. Maybe during social isolation, you find yourself having conversations with yourself. But if you really think about it, you are constantly speaking to yourself. Good things, bad things, things about stress, complaints, constantly, all day long. You know, I really don't think that I did well on that test today. I really should have studied harder. How is she so pretty? Ugh. Why couldn't God have made me look like that? It's not fair. You know, the Bible promises that I'm never going to be alone and that he's always with me. But right now I just feel really isolated. I think all my friends are hanging out right now and here I am doing the dishes. You know, there's no way that Bob likes me anymore. I'm not pretty enough, I'm not cool enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not funny enough, I'm not anything enough. See what I mean? I told you, you talk to yourself all day long. I want you to think for a second about the nature of how you speak to yourself in your day-to-day -day life. How you speak about yourself, how you speak to yourself, and how you speak about God. Do you spend a lot of time complaining? Do you talk a lot about your current situation and how terrible it is? Do you constantly tell yourself that you're not good enough? Do you constantly tell yourself that God's not enough? Paul David Tripp, one of my favorite authors, has this quote in this devotional book that I've been doing lately. And he says, we either preach to ourselves a gospel of aloneness, poverty, and inability, or we preach to ourselves the true gospel of God's presence, power, and constant provision. What do your thoughts tell you about what you're preaching to yourself? 
Are you constantly telling yourself that you're alone? That you're incapable? That you're not good enough? That your situation is just too much to bear? That God is not actually with you anymore? Or are you telling yourself that no matter what you're facing on earth, you have a heavenly father who is with you always, who is enough, who can handle any situation that you throw at him. What I absolutely love about the Psalms, all of them, is how honest the writers are. And this Psalm is no exception. The psalmist here doesn't deny the fact at all that he's suffering. Look with me quickly at verse 9. He says, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by my enemy? He doesn't deny the fact that he's suffering. He doesn't just say, yeah, life is tough, but you know, no worries. Like, I've got God, it's fine. He tells God what he's actually feeling, which is a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. I mean, this guy was eating his tears for breakfast, all right? That's a lot of pain. He tells God what he's actually feeling, but then he doesn't just sit around moping about it. He actually does something about it. He doesn't just sit around complaining, complaining to his friends, complaining to himself, complaining to God. He tells God how he's feeling and then he preaches to himself that God is worth putting all of his hope in. God is worth putting his hope in and God is worth putting your hope in. The psalmist here reminds himself of all of these truths that he knows. He knows God is good. He knows God is with him. He knows God is present. And he reminds himself of those truths. Maybe you are waiting for some kind of hope to just fall out of the sky and hit you on the head. Are you waiting for some kind of hope to just fall out of the sky and automatically make you feel better? Thinking, oh, if I just listen to this teaching this week, if I watch this video, if I listen to this sermon, I'm going to feel closer to God. I'm going to feel like he's with me. Maybe you're waiting to get back to youth group to feel any sense of hope at all that God is still with you. And you're waiting for that sense of hope. But friends, God is with you. He never left you and he does not plan on doing it. You have the power to speak that over yourself. Listening to sermons, watching videos like this is great and it feeds our soul and that's awesome. But what I want you to understand is that you have the power to speak those kinds of truths and those kind of hopes over yourself. You have the power to look at yourself in the mirror every single day and say, what are you doing? Put your hope in God. Why are you so sad? Why are you so lonely? Put your hope in God. You have the power to combat any doubt that you have that God is not with you. By saying, I will praise my father in heaven, just like the psalmist says. You have the the power to combat any fear or sadness that you have about your situation by saying, God is my rock, just like this psalmist says. Guys, this is a conscious, everyday practice. Our souls naturally want to turn away from God because we're sinners. That's our nature. We don't automatically wake up every day thinking about God and speaking these truths over ourselves. It's a practice. But when you consciously speak this kind of truth, over yourself, you can have so much hope and so much confidence. Your life can feel peaceful even if from the outside it looks like it's spinning out of control. You can feel God's presence even in the midst of a pandemic. So what I really want you to do is start to pay attention to how you speak to yourself. How do you speak about yourself? How do you speak to God? And how do you speak about God? How do you speak about your situation? The way you speak to yourself, the way that your thoughts are working in your mind, reveal an awful lot about what you think about God. Thirst for him, like it says in this psalm, as a deer pants for a stream of water. Thirst for him. Seek him out in your everyday life. And when you do that, you will just want to keep going back for more of it. Because when you control your thoughts in that way, when you speak truth over yourself, when you speak life over yourself, when you speak hope over yourself, rather than the lies that the world tells you to say, that you're not good enough, that your friends don't like you enough, that you're not smart enough, that whatever, fill in the blank, that you're worried, that you're stressed, that you're scared, any lie that the world is telling you, you have the power to combat that. Because you have the word of the Lord. 
with you always. You've got the Holy Spirit with you always, living inside of you. His presence in your life brings you so much more peace and so much more hope than anything you could ever offer to yourself. I hope that's encouraging to you. I hope that especially in the midst of a time that's so uncertain, that no one really knows what's going to happen from day to day, I hope that this is encouraging to you. I hope that you can tell, wake up every single day and tell yourself, no matter what I face today, God is my rock. He is with me. He is an ever-present source of help and strength and comfort. And when you start to think about those things and not about your lack or about your insecurities or about your fears, but when you start to speak those hopes and those truths over yourself, I promise you, you are going to be filled with so much more peace. And you're just going to want to keep going back for more and more of it, just like that deer goes back to the stream over and over again. I hope this is encouraging, friends. I hope that you also know how much we care about you here at The Heart, how much your leaders care about you. We are here for you. And we know that sometimes when life throws a bunch of curveballs at you like this and you have a lot of questions, it can be really scary. So please know that we're here for you. We'll always be here for you. And we love you and we care about you. I'm going to close this out in prayer. And then we'll kind of hash this out in our small groups a little bit more. Join me now. Jesus, you are so good. You are such a good father, Lord. The way that you care about your children, the way that you love us, it just blows my mind away, Lord. And Father, I thank you that you have given your children the ability to speak life over ourselves, the ability to remind ourselves of the truths that are in your word, the things that we know to be true about you and about your presence in our lives. Lord, I pray that we would use that tool, that when we start to feel scared, when we start to feel sad, when we start to feel like we're not good enough, would we remind ourselves of your presence? Would we remind ourselves of your ever-present help? Father, you are good. You are good. Would I wake up every day and just tell myself that, Lord, even if I'm not feeling it? Would I tell myself that you are a good father and that you love me and that you are enough and that is enough for my day? God, I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for the ways that you love us and care for us. I'm grateful for your cross. Jesus, we love you, and we're so grateful to you when we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Thanks for letting me hang out with you this week. I so enjoyed our time together. Together. I love you all, always. I hope that you have an incredible rest of your week, and hopefully I'll get to see your amazing faces really soon. All right. Bye.